Hello, welcome back to Learn Economia. Today, what we are going to do is we are going to give you a summary of a very important concept that is sense capability approach. I have already done a video on sense capability approach and by going for its details, but today we'll be giving you a gist of the theory. The concept actually given by a famous economist Amartya Sen and by capability approach, uh, what Sen means is is the choice of focus upon the moral significance of individual's capability. And why this capability is needed? This is needed in order to achieve some kind of lives that people have to value. And they would be having some reason to value these kind of lives. And the concept of capability or uh, has been or the approach of capability could be distinguished from other established approaches to ethical evaluation. And these established approaches would include utilitarianism and also resources. All these kinds of things that is all these kinds of approaches which is already established would mainly focus on the uh, subjective well-being of people and also it, it focuses upon the availability of means to good life. Coming to the concept of capability. What can be a person's capability? A person's capability to live a good life is something that could be defined in terms of uh, some valuable doings and beings. This is what Amartya Sen told. And this would include the health, the good health that you have. This would include the kind of valuable relationship with you have um, that you have with your loved ones. And as I have already told you, the concept has been given by a famous philosopher and economist who is an Indian and whose name is Amartya Sen. That is why the concept is named as sense capability approach. And this person has developed this concept in 1980s and still it reminds a closely, uh, a closely attached topic to Amartya Sen. The concept of capability has been used extensively in the arena of economics, not only in the arena of economics that has been used uh, in some disciplines which are outside the arena of economics. It has been employed extensively in the context of human development. Uh, coming to the case of United Nations, you can see that the UN development program uh, has taken this approach as a broader, deeper alternative to deal with the concept of GDP per capita etc. We know that when it comes to GDP or when it comes to per capita income, this is something to deal with some numerical. We would be valuing a person based on some thing known as an income which you can uh, express in terms of numbers. But there can be several several other things that would, deter that would determine a person's uh, development apart from the income. Coming to poverty, an understanding of uh, poverty from the perspective of a capability approach is considered to be what is known as deprivation. That is why we can say that poverty is understood as deprivation in the capability approach. Why, de de why this is being done is that we have to live a good life. So when it comes to poverty, this is basically expressed in numbers. But when it comes to deprivation, that is uh, something which is above than numerical expression. And also we can say that development is also an uh, uh, extension or it can also be something that happened as a result of capability approach. We have to be able to distinguish between growth and development. When growth is something which you can express in terms of numericals, development is something which is far far above than growth. And development is something which is considered to be a, a, an expansion of capability. Within academic philosophy, capability approach has been, dis, uh, has been taken up by different economists and different other scholars. And it is seen to be relevant for moral evaluation, especially when it comes to social arrangement, which is beyond the development context, we can consider this. For example, gender justice. In the arena of gender justice also, we can use this approach. And this theory or this aspect or this approach of capability is seen as providing foundation for normative theories. And here, what we have to understand is that there exists some kind of explicit metric or some kind of rule attached to this. And uh, this would be specifying with the capabilities which are very much valuable in our economy. And also this might be specifying with how 
देखिए पुबलिटीज आर बींग डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड और हाउ दीज आर टू बी डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड हाउ शुड बी डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड दैट इज समथिंग विच इन्वॉल्व द रूल इन कमिंग टू दम काइंड ऑफ एक्सप्लिस मैटर इट डील्स विद केपेबिलिटीज दैट आर वैल्यूबल इन द इकोनॉमी एंड अ फिलोसोफर माता नुसबॉम has provided a most influential version of capability theory of justice and this person has derived from the requirements of uh, human dignity a list of central capabilities which has to be incorporated into the national constitutions and this could guarantee up to all up to a th certain threshold so in uh, summary we can say that uh, the capability approach which is put forward by amartya sen has got a lot of uh, implications when it comes to real life and the implications of capability approach is something that is not only totally restricted within the arena of economics but it it has got a wide range of applications and it has got a wide range of uh, uses when it comes to uh, the domains outside economics as well so that's all about today's uh, discussion so i'll request you to like share and subscribe to this channel for more videos and you can be a part of my telegram channel and telegram group to discuss your doubts i'll be providing the links of these in the description box that's all thank you for watching